Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to the Theosophical Society Facebook Live, San Francisco Lodge. I'm Mary Power. I'm the president of our lodge, and I'm doing tonight's Founders Day, annual Founders Day celebration. So since I'm going to be reading, uh, which is um, hopefully won't be too hard for you, so I hope you have a cup of tea and can relax and, and just listen um, and, you know, enjoy the talking head. Um, so uh, since this is the year of 2020, hindsight, I'm going to refresh historical context of America as a backdrop to the extraordinary timing and placement of origin in the founding of Theosophy. I'll draw the link between America and Theosophy to spotlight our mutual impact on karmic history. At the same time, we are here to celebrate the trailblazing intensity of our founders of Theosophy, their action on Western thought and spirit beyond materialism, bringing new concepts like karma and reincarnation to this America, a nation saturated in materialism. It's no secret or great revelation that America was born from genocide, slavery, brutality, and war. The very people engaged in atrocity and revolution were among the first immigrants, refugees who fled Europe for reasons of famine, poverty, disease, tyranny, both political and religious, and also those seeking gold and profit, as well as indigenous people and slaves enlisted to, to exchange for freedom. In 2020, more questions surface as we confront the truth about our past. The question of who discovered America is quaint compared to the truths regarding the founding date of America. The new world continent known as America wasn't new to the original people living here. Any dispute seems entirely racist without recognition of original inhabitants living here 20,000 years before discovery. The indigenous people were on this content, continent long before sixth century AD Irish monk, Saint, Saint Brendan traveled to it and long before Leif Erikson. The 15th century that marks his arrival at the northern tip of Newfoundland was 500 years before Chinese Muslim explorer, Admiral Zhang He, and the well-known Italian-Spanish-sponsored Spanish Christopher Columbus, both sailed the ocean blue in 1492. But it was Columbus who opened the charters to Europe, even though Amerigo Vespucci navigated this continent and named it, even though Amerigo was the scientific navigator, cosmographer, and astronomer. But more importantly was the discovery of gold, and that gave Christopher Columbus the mythic credits of discovering America. Even though he landed in San Salvador and thought it was Asia. The founding of America, however, upon the indigenous population is scarred with historical land grabs through means of genocidal war. The American Indian Wars lasted 300 years and through means of broken treaties, dragged along side by side with wars of rebellion against the British tyranny and simultaneous, simultaneously against the most heinous fascist slave system in the world. We celebrate July 4th, 1776 as the founding date 
of America by these wars. The Declaration of Independence signed on that day would begin our long journey towards civil rights action in America to this day. There are volumes more to the story. A more recent national discussion surrounds the year 1619. 16, the 1619 project won Nicole Hannah-Jones a Pulitzer Prize for introducing interactive commentary to remind our history that, that the founding, the building, and the profit of America began with chattel slavery in 1619, the year when the first ship arrived at Point Comfort in the British colony of Virginia bearing a cargo of 20 to 30 enslaved Africans. These are the grounds, theosophy born out of. The tireless labor and selfless dedication that cultivates religious freedom, tolerance, and curiosity in theosophy is credited to Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Let's see, that's her. And, and she preferred to be called HPB, and Colonel Henry Steele Olcott. Among others, but most notably, was the SDNY lawyer, William Kwan Judge, Southern Dis District of New York lawyer, who was college, who was colleague and close friend with Colonel Olcott. The Theosophical Society in America was founded on November 17, 1875. The San Francisco Lodge, chartered by Annie Besant, was founded August 10, 1901. Annie Besant first met HPB through reading the Secret Doctrine Tomes. In 1889, she met Blavatsky in real life and became a member. And she knew her so-called free thinker friends wouldn't agree with this. Besant was a British socialist working and organizing for labor rights, children's rights, and she was a women's rights activist. She championed freedom in Britain, Ireland, and India. In 1907, she became the president of the Theosophical Society in Adyar. When World War I broke out, she campaigned for democracy in India and organized. She was a spiritual seeker, lost some friends because of it, and then made some new ones. There were several attempts at forming the society. HPB tried to found a spiritual society in Cairo, then later, just five months before the Theosophical Society was named on November 17th, the Miracle Club was proposed. The Miracle Club failed because the starring medium wanted to make a business for profit out of theosophy. And both founders Alcott and Blavatsky vehemently opposed this. After the Theosophical Society was created, Mistakes in collaborative attempts with Swami Dayanand was subsequently aborted. And at some point, Alcott had talked of, of drawing up plans of rituals and levels with his brothers in Freemasonry. Nothing stuck until the Theosophical Society rooted its own independence. William Kwan Judge frequented HPB salons at 46 Irving Place and later the well-known Lamasery in New York City. The salon's audience numbered 100 per night, included well-known dignitaries, world travelers, scientists, inventors like Thomas Edison and British Sir William Crookes, the famous British physicist and astronomer. It was the hip place to be, and with cutting edge ideas of occult, philosophy, science paired with eccentric and lively discussion, 
all in an awfully stuffy Victorian era. There were lectures, including Blavatsky herself, lecturers, including Blavatsky herself. She generally stirred conversation on various topics, ranging from the phallic element in religion, recent wonders among the mediums, history, the souls of flowers, Italian character, the strangeness of travel, chemistry, poetry, nature's trinity, the Romanis, gravitation, the Cabinari, Crook's new discovery about force, the force of light, the literature of magic, the lost canon of proportion of the Egyptians. Four years after founding the Theosophical Society in New York, Blavatsky and Olcott embarked for India. <clears throat> Over time, they would build the international headquarters of the Theosophical Society in Adyar. But before HPB left for India, she wrote Isis Unveiled and worked to become a naturalized American citizen. On July 8, 1878, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky became the first Russian-born American woman. <laughs> HPB and Olcott would joke with each other frequently, um, always having some pet nicknames for each other, um, and sometimes pulling pranks on other people too. But um, Olcott remembers before the, they left for India, for the, uh, he says, we used to speak of ourselves as theosophical twins, and sometimes as a trinity. The chandelier hanging overhead making the third party of the Trinity. Leaving, leaving New York towards India, the last thing we did was to say with mock seriousness, farewell old chandelier, silent, light-giving, unchanging friend and confident, confidant. <laughs> so it was William Kwan Judge who tended the roots of theosophy in America at the Lamasary, the New York headquarters, after Olcott and HPB went to India. General Abner Doubleday, a retired U.S. Army officer who fought against the Confederacy at Fort Sumter and at Gettysburg, lent assistance with a few other associates. The first two years in India thrust the founders into deeper currents and courses of development. According to Olcott, the new New York headquarters were in suspended animation for those first two years. So fortunately, William Kwan Judge was diligent and keen to incubate the seeds of occult mysticism and esoteric philosophy for the future of theosophy to thrive in America. Nevertheless, Especially in the beginning, the viability of the movement derived directly from Blavatsky and Olcott. The colonel would return to New York only one more time in his lifetime, briefly in 1906 before going back to Adyar, where he died in 1907. HPB never returned. In 1856, so now four score and seven years ago, or whatever, however it begins. Here we go. I want to go back a little bit with um, Colonel Henry Steele Olcott into our history. In 1856, Henry Steele Olcott became the leading authority on the development of a sugar made of sorgo and infi, a Chinese-African hybrid sugar. It offered a political pressure from the north with its potential to cripple the southern plantations along with the slavery system. He was only about 24 years old then. And he went on lecture circuits, he authored, authored books, and, no, and gained notoriety that landed him the position of associate editor of the New York Tribune. The Confederacy was well aware of the reputation of the abolition 
abolitionist newspaper, the New York Tribune, with its endless assertions of the very tenets of John Brown. Confederate strategy was constantly being leaked and published in the Tribune to the point that the Tribune journalists were frequently run out of town or worse, thrown in jail or worse. One writing assignment almost got all cut, hanged with John Brown. Pressure was building in 1859 between those who wanted slavery to spread and those who risked their lives to make it end. Harper's Ferry held federal munitions need, that were needed to secure safe passage of slave refugees into the mountains. The John Brown went on a suicide mission with his gang and raided the arsenal. They were called militias back then. Uh, and that goes way back to the, uh, before we even had armies. And, um, but now we have armies and navies and, and uh, organized uh, government. So um, it's kind of a holdover. But he was, he, he went on the suicide mission and raided the federal arsenal. And although he got, they got the guns and he survived, many others died. And it only took Robert E. Lee, who was Confederate leaning, uh, and his Marines two months to recapture the arsenal and imprison John Brown. On December 2nd, 1859, Charleston was heavily militarized camp of Confederates. There was a bounty on any Tribune journalist coming in to write about the hanging of John Brown. Then naturally, Olcott volunteered for the job. He entered the train filled with the South's uniformed reinforcement party. And it was rough because he obviously stood apart, dressed in his street clothes. But when they asked him who he was and what he was doing, he simply declared the truth. I'm a volunteer. And he held to that. Once off the train, he spotted a rabid secessionist that knew he was a Tribune man. It was a matter of life and death, so he ran for cover, leaving his luggage behind, which was doom as it would be taken hold for, for pickup at the courthouse. After an hour of deliberating what to do, Olcott risked asking for help from a fearless young man confiding under Masonic oath. Henry S. Olcott wrote every detail about John Brown's last glance at the Blue Ridge Mountains. Later on, he added, Quote, now isn't that pitiful? Isn't it enough to make a stone image blush to think of all this great army with its flying flags and its brass guns and its vedettes and patrols all the way up to the foot of the Blue Ridge Mountains hailing one wounded Kansas City farmer to execution? John Brown descended with self-possession and dignity and mounted the gallows steps. He looked about at earth and sky and people and remarked to Captain Avis, his jailer, upon the beauty of the scene. When the American Civil War began in April of 1861, Olcott enlisted with the Union Army of the North, fighting for the abolition of slavery, industrial progress, and the sol solidarity of the nation through continuation of the Union. He was assigned with General Ambrose Burnside's military operations. Immediately, Burnside noted Olcott's integrity. Henry had pointed out that the government was overspending on equipment that didn't even work. By November 1861, Olcott, so later that year, Olcott received orders 
that appointed him as special investigator for war profiteering, the outcome of cleaning out the Augean stables, a Greek reference, was recognized as winning a battle for the Union. By 1864, Lincoln's Secretary of War Edwin Stanton then commissioned Colonel Olcott to do the same investigations in the Navy. Stanton, Stanton later enlisted the Colonel on the manhunt and investigation of Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Civil War was over in May of 1865, ending the business of slavery. Although the slaves themselves didn't get that joyous news until June 19th, 1865. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky was an adventurous, driven by generosity, fierce altruism, and her passion for arcane knowledge. She worked with great masters from around the world, sometimes her psychic abilities remotely, by, sometimes by her psychic abilities remotely, through clairvoyance, telekinesis, and aports, and sometimes in real life. She dedicated her entire life as ready to dare and suffer for, for the sake of all, bearing theosophy to the world. And she did. Speaking many languages, HPB particularly enjoyed speaking French with great ease and found that the English language was choice in her prolific writings on esoteric philosophy. She wasn't bound to the European or Victorian social class. And most women in those days were completely restricted, bound to faint by corset. Therefore, it's remarkable the amounts of travel all around the world Blavatsky did solo. Also remarkable, and it was, it was because she um, went undercover. She went in disguises. And I'm not sure, I haven't read anything, but I believe she had an ability to make friends easily. Also remarkable is the amount of travel that was done considering it was by ship or train or horse. She was proudest of her time in Tibet, more than Egypt or India or the other places. Between 1855 and 1870, HPB spent about seven years in Tibet and Little Tibet, Ladakh as it's known today. No other European had ever gone deep into those territories where she had gone to learn, to study, and to prepare. Karmically, her time spent in Tibet was on the same level of importance as meeting Olcott in America. Elena Petrovna Blavatsky arrived in America not knowing she would meet Colonel Olcott's Henry Steele, <laughs> Henry Steele Olcott, and they first met at the Chittenden farmhouse in Vermont. They first spoke together in French, the colonel lighting her cigarette. It was 1874, and he was a chivalrous feminist and adventurer. There's more uh, story but I think um, I might just leave it here. I think that's a lot of uh, reading. And um, I'm going to, we're going to post this on our website at SFTS, uh, www.sftslodge.org. And there's more that you, if you're interested, uh, there's more on uh, uh, William Rudolph O'Donovan's bronze medallion of HPB and her relationship with him and in Sri Lanka. 
so that'll be posted there. And I've also included the uh, references and uh, also uh, kind of further reading. So uh, thank you so much. And before we go, we have a tradition where we read The Golden Steps. And this was written by HPB. So uh, usually in our meetings, we hand this to somebody new-ish in, in, the, in the group, in the circle, and ask if they would read it. So um, in the spirit of uh, Zen mind, and Zen heart. I'm always a beginner. <laughs> so I so I read this to you in that in that spirit. The golden steps, a clean life, an open mind, a pure heart, an eager intellect, an unveiled spiritual perception, a brotherly less a brotherliness for all a readiness to give and receive advice and instruction, a courageous endurance of personal injustice, a brave declaration of principles, a valiant defense of those who are unjustly attacked, and a constant eye to the ideal of human progression and perfection which the sacred science depicts. These are the golden stairs up the steps of which the learner may climb to the temple of divine wisdom. Namaste, happy day, happy Founders Day. Thank you all, have a nice evening. Bye. Okay, I think I'm done. Oh, maybe not. Bye.